Let's look at some other chemical signals of the endocrine system. We've covered most of the glands in this picture right here, but have not get to, gotten to those of the reproductive system yet. So looking at some of these other hormones, one is testosterone. The production site is the testes. Remember, with all these hormones, you want to know the production site, the target tissues, and the effects. The testes is one of those chemical signals that targets many things in the body. The main reason being, this is one of the big chemical signals needed for growth. We mentioned before, if anybody's going to grow and develop properly, there's a lot of hormones involved, but the really big ones are growth hormone, thyroid hormone, and then testosterone and estrogen, depending on the genders. So with testosterone, affects many different tissues of the body because of the growth primarily. Also needed for development of the male reproductive system, and also if the male reproductive system is going to continue to function normally. So if males get older and this hormone level drops, Male reproductive system doesn't work as well. Estrogen is actually very similar in structure and function to testosterone. Now, the production side here are the ovaries, right? Testes and ovaries are the gonads of the two genders. Gonads are the organs that produce the reproductive cells of the body. But here we're at the ovaries with the estrogen. And because this one's very much involved with growth with females, it also targets many tissues. You look at teenagers when they have those big growth spurts. That's when the testosterone and the estrogen levels really start to rise. So definitely needed for growth, also needed for the female reproductive system to develop properly, and also if it's going to continue to function normally. And we'll see how all this is involved with menses cycles further along. Also in the ovaries, there's progesterone, also needed for the female reproductive system and menses cycles. Another one down here is relaxin. Now, relaxin gets its name because it relaxes connective tissues of the body. This chemical signal here is often mentioned near the time of labor and delivery because its primary function is to cause the cartilage that binds the two halves of the pelvis together to relax. And if that happens, those two bones of the pelvis can move further apart. That increases the damage of the birth canal. That's why the hips are often wider after labor and delivery than what they were before. We mentioned once before, when it comes to the thymus gland, there's a little hormone thymosin. This is needed for a maturing of the lymphatic system. Because the lymphatic system has a lot to do with immunity in the future. Also from the kidneys, we have a very important hormone called erythropoietin. Kidneys aren't really considered part of this system, but they definitely have a very important hormone, erythropoietin. Notice the beginning of this word, erythro. You see erythro in this section anywhere actually in anatomy. You think red blood cells. This chemical signal will target the red bone marrow. That's where you make all of your blood cells. We'll see that in future videos. So the kidneys are always monitoring your blood oxygen levels. If at any time they detect oxygen delivery is inadequate, they release this hormone. It targets the cells of the red bone marrow and increases the production of reds. Again, initially, inadequate oxygen delivery is what signaled the release of this chemical. If you make more reds, that'll give you more oxygen delivery. Simple negative feedback. And also down here at the bottom, there's atrial natriuretic hormone, abbreviated ANH. The production site being the right atrium of the heart. So your heart, again, is not really considered part of this system. But it does have some important hormones, and this is one of them here. Look at what this hormone targets, the kidneys, and it's going to increase urine output. you got to remember that water balance is primarily about blood pressure. So this chemical signal is released when your blood pressure is high. If your blood pressure is too high, obviously you'd want to drop it. When your blood pressure is elevated, the walls of the right atrium get stretched more. And the more they get stretched, the more this hormone they release. It tells the kidneys to get rid of some of that water in the body. And as you lose water, blood pressure drops. Simple negative feedback right there. All right, there's the information on the books at the end.